of uh, work for Oracle. <laughs> That's a good first start. <laughs> yes, um, I'm not paid by Oracle. I can say whatever I want because I work for a, a French university. Why the safe harbor then? <laughs> Why the safe harbor if you don't work for Oracle? <laughs> and and um, so uh, Java is, is uh, open source since uh, something like 10 years now, which means that anybody can uh, um, um, be in an expert group. That's why I'm in the expert group of Valhalla. Valhalla is uh, the code name for two things. The first one is to introduce value type in the GVM and the second one is um, to have a partial reification of generics because if you have value type but your generics box everything in object, basically you don't um, have, um, you, can't, um, you will not have the best performance of value type with the an array list, by example. Um, the second problem is very hard. So currently, we only tackle the first one, which is how to introduce value type in the VM. Uh, we start something like five or four years ago, a long time. <laughs> we explore a lot of dead ends. <laughs> That's why it takes a long time. So basically, um, Last November, we had our first prototype that nobody used it, basically because if you didn't, um, there was no compiler support. So if you didn't use either your own compiler or something like ASM, <laughs> um, it was hard to use. But basically, it was for validating that we can have uh, object and value type in the same uh, VM. Currently, we are moving to a new prototype that should be released next week with compiler support. Yeah. And uh, with uh, this new prototype, which is called uh, L-World, um, basically, object is the parent for either reference type and value type. In fact, it's a little more uh, complex than that. Uh, um, the parent is either object or any interface, which means that with a value type, you can implement an interface and you will have no boxing at all. So um, basically, what is a value type? A value type is not a struct, first. Yeah. Um, why it's not a struct? Um, it's like a struct, but without the uh, copy things that you have. If you are in C and you send um, a struct to a method, you will have a copy, and uh, it's some, uh, sometimes hard for the compiler to not, for the JIT compiler to not do the copy. So we didn't want to have this copy semantics inside the value type. There are uh, other issues with uh, concurrency too. Um, so currently a value type is an immutable data structure that works like a struct but is immutable because if it's immutable, the, uh, um, the user cannot see if it's an alias or not, basically, because you have no way to do side effect on it. Um, so it's fairly restrictive compared to structs, uh, but this allows to, um, uh, basically the first idea is to say um, with a value type you, you don't want uh, to have heap allocation. But if it's um, a value type like in Java, you don't have even stack allocation at all because you can already uh, allocate everything in a register. Basically, you split your value type uh, in the different register. Now that we are, uh, we are uh, register rich, let's say since the 64 bits uh, Intel platform, we are richer, 
so we can use more registers. Uh, can, can, I, can I have a question right here? So since you are talking about how to assemble value type into registers, does it mean that the target uh, used for value types is only for very small structures, like uh, we're talking about tens of bytes? Um, yes and no. <laughs> the, the lightweight it will be, the faster it will be. Uh, it's it's more it's 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 um, it's still the VM that will decide. The VM can decide that every value type will be boxed in the heap. It will be stupid to do that, but uh, the the design allows that. The design allow uh, value type to be either in the heap, on the stack, in the registers, and the VM decide where to put things. Basically, in the interpreter, it will be mostly on the stack, mm -hmm. and when it's JIT compiled, it will be on the register. Does does it also mean that if we if a particular structure or well, this value type is big enough, it will be automatically boxed and be a a heap a heap object? Yes. And uh, it's, it's very uh, important if you have an array of value type. Mm -hmm. Because if you have an array of value type and the, the value type is big, you can have really big arrays in memory. Because an array of value type, it's not an array of reference. It's an array of a big chunk of, uh, yeah, an array of values. So the VM can decide that for small arrays, it will be laid out like an array of struct, an array of values. But for big arrays, it will still be an array of reference. Basically, the VM decides to flatten or not. We, we call it flattening. Flatten or not a value type. Um, um, basically, if you, you, it's very important for array. Otherwise, uh, a rev with more than two gigabytes of. <laughs> uh, um, I, I know that that Brian Getz likes to give this example of array of structs, so I don't know, array of points, uh, yeah. where which gets flattened and we eliminate all the yeah. all the headers and we are able to have pre-calculated offsets to every yeah. element. Uh, do we have a? Do you recall any kind of performance numbers from any of those tests? Uh, so I have a laptop there, <laughs> and um, with the latest version, and uh -huh. I think I, I have an array of point somewhere in in my test. So so we can just run it, and we can just run. It. Okay, but the question is: is it available? Is the benchmark that uses that and uh, yes. it should work? Is it available that we yeah, can uh, play after after? No, after the session, can yeah. I play with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can play with. Um, currently, the state of the prototype is that uh, you can play with things. Uh, we know that we have some um, uh, performance issue uh, on some. Um, basically, the, 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 the thing is um, currently because you are able to see a value type as an object, it means that you are able to see an array of value type as an array of objects which is fun, but currently not optimized. It should be optimized. It, it, should be optimized. it, it, it will be optimized, but not yet. So, so it means ah, basically it that um, my value types, uh, I need to consider value types as heap objects, and maybe on some times there is optimization that can be no, it, it's like it, an array of struct. The, it's more the opposite. Yeah, but it's, you, you, you said that at some point the VM can decide to be like a heap object. Yes. So I don't know, I don't control this, uh, so I so must assume the worst to be f safe. <laughs> you, 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 like can in always, you can always assume the worst, but it's not what we do. It, it's, it's like saying um, uh, the VM will never uh, optimize the loop. The VM will. Yeah, there are some in some codes the the JIT doesn't optimize loops. Uh, by example, if you do a fucking volatile read in the middle of a loop, you're basically dead for a lot of optimization. But in general, you have 
JIT optimization for loop. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, I, I will mostly see that like escape analysis, like sometimes I can have no. and sometimes not. No, so. it, it's, it's more uh, reliable that escape analysis. So the main issue with escape analysis is that you have to keep identity because you don't know if your escape analysis with re a reference object, um, you have the, the problem of the identity. Uh, you, you may have a, uh, a code that you don't see that check that does a, a, a double equals. And the JIT doesn't see this code. So the escape analysis currently is limited by the fact that the JIT doesn't know the whole code. And so as to expect, expect the worst. Okay, but so do you have uh, some example where you, you, you switch to a uh, heap object? Or in, uh, beside the fact that it's a large object, but uh, for example, like two fields, like no. two ints in uh, no. value no. types, where, when? W w where is the limit? Basically, the, um, th there are several limits, but one is, uh, uh, it depends how you use the value type, but you, you, can, uh, you can use a uh, varandal with value types, which means that you are able to do a comparison set on value types. If your value types is too big, there is no comparative set primitive in the CPU. In that case, you will, the VM will have to box. Okay. So, so, so it depends on the operation you do on a value type. So, so by default, the idea is you will have the, the best performance. But if you uh, start to use um, volatile things or things like this, you, you may have less performance. Whatever. It's always the case. So it's just a small question related to what he asked. Will the user be able to know if the value type in the heap or in the stack or wherever <laughs> when you, because a lot of times you are trying to optimize but you. Um, yes and no, it depends what you mean by user. If, if, if it's uh, developer, I can, I, developer. I can uh, enable uh, log compilation and I see <laughs> it, <laughs> the answer is yes. Otherwise, but it the answer won't be is no. like easy to, to optimize. Uh, so, so the thing is, uh, you, can have, um, uh, you can have a value type which is optimized for a method at some point, uh, which is, I mean, in register. And later, because you have the optimization, it can be on stack, okay. or later it can be on heap. So, so by easy optimization, I mean something like you mark this, annotate it, or something, and then something and, will tell you that it's no longer on ah, the register. You mean the, v, the, the VM crash on the program crash? Yeah, crash. If, yeah. yeah, crash. If if it's it's, not it's something we have discussed. Uh, currently, the answer is no, but it's open. Um, if you want it, basically, you join the mailing list and <laughs> scream, say, I want it. I mean, it's something we have discussed. I, I'm, I'm not sure um, I want this. I, I fully understand why. I mean, <laughs> as, as, as a runtime, uh, as a developer of, uh, of runtime of dynamic language, I, w I want to be sure that some things like uh, uh, an integer like, like, like Ruby that can be a small integer or a big one are always a value type. Yeah. The but, but, but the problem is uh, the, um, if a user asks for an array which is that big, you can say out of memory in that case instead of going to, uh, to box things. But uh, if you start to of doing things like um, uh, concurrency primitive, what you should do? Say no? So I think you suggested one thing which is like crash the JVM or some kind of flag, but I don't know, another mean to to signal the user, I don't may, like logging, but uh, maybe in the GC log or something. Yeah, yeah. 
it, 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 it will be in the log compilation. Uh, it's currently yeah. in the log compilation. Okay. The question is if it's like easy to find it over there. Ah. And, and this is. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not the right person for that. Usually I dump the assembly code and I check. So. Okay. <laughs> but, but it's a good question. Can you talk a little bit about uh, initialization of value types? Yeah, good question. So uh, by default, um, you have uh, um, 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 basically um, for the VM, the way to initialize the value type is the way to initialize the reference type are different. What we are trying to do is that for Java, it will be the same thing, which means that for Java, you will write your constructor like any constructor, and the compiler will do the magic. Basically, what's uh, the VM uh, for a VM? Uh, a value type is always immutable, so there is no. Uh, uh, with a reference type where you are in the middle of also constructor, you have some fields that are initialized and some that are not. We can't allow that for value types. So we have a primitive, we have two primitives. One is default, it initializes a value type with a bunch of zeros. And we have with field, which is something that take a value type, change the value of one field, and return a new value type. So it's, it's fully immutable. And we have the optimization in the VM to, when you do several with field, it will do one, uh, one operation. So for the VM, the initialization of a value type is default with, 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 with. And uh, currently, what the compiler does, it's, it's, it's in the current prototype, it takes uh, your, um, 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 your Java code that does this dot x equals x and translate it to with. So uh, it's a kind of magic things, but you can, uh, from the user perspective, you write the same code if it's a, a value type or a reference type. Uh, obviously, it means that this doesn't escape from the constructor. But nobody does that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if I want to use this, I, can I use the ASM lib for this? Yes and no, <laughs> because uh, I haven't finished the work. But again, on my laptop here. Uh, technically, no, it's in, 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 a, in a branch. So it's more than on my laptop. But yes, soon there will be. Um, the full ASM support. You, um, it's scheduled for uh, ASM uh, 7, actually. Okay, so uh, then. At the end of September. Uh, next question would be uh, Can I now use reference types in a pseudo struct or not? Uh, you mean in a value type you can have reference? There is no problem. For like the, the GC is smart enough to poke the point that have reference in the middle. Uh, uh, a value type it, it is not just a bunch of primitive types. It can be other value types or reference type. There is no, no issue with that. That includes array? That includes everything which is a reference. An array is a reference. Uh, so the reference type that I'm using there doesn't have to be immutable? Um, yes. It doesn't have to, or it does have? Uh, it doesn't have to. I mean, uh, the reference is immutable. So the reference is immutable, yeah. but the content of the object is not. So, uh, following on on that one, if you indeed allocate, uh, if you have an array member of value types inside a value type, does it get flattened? No, an array is a reference. Okay. There is, uh, so it's something that may change in the future, of course, the but future. currently an array is a reference. You and can't, array of anything, array of reference, array. 
No, no, the, 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 value, the values inside the array are flattened, but the array itself oh, okay. is not yeah, okay. flattened. Yeah, okay, ah. I see what you mean. Uh, fl so flat the array isn't immutable. Yeah. You, you, you need something like frozen arrays of another problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a quick question. Uh, will objects that are represented as value types be contained in a heap dump? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, in, in your introduction, in your spiel for. Oh, is it off? Sorry. In your spiel for. The, oh, come on. Uh, is it working? Yeah. In your spiel for this talk, you were saying, okay, this is a customization point for us. This was the last chance for us to have a say in the direction of Valhalla. So, I'm just wondering what those choices are, whether you can tell us a bit more about that. Oh, uh, well, what, what's still un t remaining to be decided? Uh, currently, you have um, so so. Um, I will explain more the trade-off. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, if you have a value type, there is no identity, which means that if you do uh, equals equals, it will al always return false. Equals equals mean. Is it at the same place in memory? <laughs> it's not in memory, perhaps. So this is the first restriction. The other was is you can't use a value type uh, in a synchronized thing. That's the whole point. It's exactly exactly the same thing. You need a, an address. Um, you have no. Uh, um, Default hash code, which means that system dot identity hash code doesn't work. Otherwise, you have to have one field in each value type just for that, which is stupid. And that's all. That's the restriction. <laughs> and that's a problem. I mean, that's the whole point of value types, right? That these these trade-offs exist. It, 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 yeah. The, the first one is a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it means that as uh, the, uh, usually in, in the code it's fine because you, you write something like I will do uh, equals equals first and then I will do a real equals. And the real equals uh, will be. So um, yeah. uh, by default currently the compiler provide a default equals two string hash code and even funnier a long hash code and because this is a prototype. <laughs> uh, so so uh, it's not something that the VM provide, it's something that the compiler provide and uh, these uh, things are implemented in uh, using method handles. Basically uh, the compiler doesn't generate a two string it generates a call to a bootstrap method that will do the two string. So we can change the way the thing are done after. Sorry. So before we began this session, you said there is a story about retrofitting string. <laughs> so, 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 so far, everyone point, said it's not possible. The main point, which is not fully clear, uh, it's clear for me, but I don't think it's clear for every member of the expert group, which is um, we want to have a way to take a class and retrofit it as a value type. It's important for optional. On the fly. Uh, no, no, no. On, um, I mean, uh, at, at, at some GDK. Okay. Uh, point. Uh, let's say for GDK 12. Yes. 20. <laughs> 20 <sounds good. laughs> um, uh, optional will be a value type. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to provide this kind of things. Yeah, but I it's, think it's, it's it's hard because oh, I have forgotten to list the last restriction. You can't put null in a value type, <laughs> which is a reference. True. <laughs> Yeah, you should not use it now, so there is no issue. But currently, if, if there is a code <laughs> that put null in an optional, we will have trouble. Right. So uh, cu the current uh, 
hypothesis is we will need an intermediary representation which is not the class and the value type but which is a value type which is nullable. So <laughs> you can migrate so, sorry, from a class you mean to a value type which is nullable. You mean, you mean the, um, the variable that point to the value type or, or the inside uh, field of the value type? Oh, it, it's a detail of implementation. So we can talk about... No, no, I, I, I mean, if I have a value type and I have a reference inside this value type, so this reference cannot be null? No, no, okay. I, I mean, uh, for the user, the value type will be null. It will not be represented by null because you want to flatten value type. So basically, the, 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 the current ID is, uh, if you want this, uh, uh, in that case, as a user, you will have to say this field of the value type, if this field is zero, then for the VM, it's an encoding for null. <laughs> so, 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 so for the string question, you have a lot of strings that are initialized with null. So the first thing is you have to solve the nullable value type problem. Uh, just, just so as far as I remember, the big problem with string is that people are actually serializing on that. Uh, yes, yeah. synchronizing on string, but 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 in uh, yeah, but in that case, I'm um, I, I will be happy to crash. So basically, it's exactly this. Why, why if, if people commit this crime and assign null to optional, why can't you simply crash them? I would lovely see them, you know, burning, the system um, crashing. That's so, <laughs> the main issue is um, there is already code in, in things like Spring, JBoss, uh, Five wow, big that's one. even better. I would love <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, if if you take a, the list of the uh, uh, of the ten most uh, used uh, uh, Maven jar, and if you if you take a look to um, uh, uh, code that will uh, uh, assign null either to an optional or uh, to um, uh, a Java dot time type like a local date time in this, you find one. Okay. And a second question, so, so just, uh, um, uh, uh, what about serialization of optional then? Because oh, it was it's, it's, another, it's, it's another question. It's a GDK question, and uh, optional is not serializable because it's a transient value. But it's a fucking monad, you know? <laughs> uh, but I can serialize monads. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> The thing is, a serialization of value types, you, you don't have any problem with that. Uh, no, there is, ni uh, I mean, you will say implement serializable and okay, it will thanks. be. Uh, the only thing is, um, um, we may provide a default serialization, which means if you implement serializable, it will be enough to have the default serialization. Yeah, yeah, because you're serializing contents anyway, so, and not the, yeah, and I wanted to get back to this uh, question of why don't you just crash the VM, and I see a great didactical value in crashing the VM on crap Java programs, but that's not the Java way, so if you have the misbehaving Java program, it still works and it doesn't crash VM, so that's the, the whole compatibility story revolves about that. Well, it's already in the jar, somewhere in the bytecode forum. It's too late to, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, yes, you can you can break that and the Java C compilation point. But after you got your bytecode out and it's well behaved and accepted by Java C compiler, unless it's the egregious compiler bug. So, so it for um, nullable value type, we call them a value based uh, class for nullable value type the compiler will complain, but you will have to recompile. 
So remember, Java C is not the only one emitting bytecode. Yeah, that's Google, why you're here. For example, <laughs> no, uh, we, did, we rarely managed to crash the VM. We managed to do it on occurrence, but uh, rarely. And uh, we, are, we are always happy about when they uh, did changes to the verification, for example, that blow up our totally generated bytecode and essential mechanism for delegating constructors and things like that. So yes. we are very happy to remember other people there's more than Java C to create, yeah. generate yeah. bytecode. Yeah. Uh, and, and on this matter, um, so this sounds like you're not using LDC to load the value type later on. No. Why, no. why not? Why? Uh, if you have a LDC, it means that in the constant pool you have a reference to a value type, which means that in the constant pool you need a way to initialize the value by sending the value. So if one of the value of the value type is a runtime live object, you can't. But anyway, if it's only constant, um, so I will rephrase your question. It's perhaps not your question. But basically, we have no operator that takes a bunch of uh, argument on stack and load them as a value type. We try to do that, and it's very complex to do. So the, the, the bytecode, uh, you need to introduce a new bytecode, and this bytecode is very complex to implement. So that's why we go to the solution to say v default, we feel, we feel, we feel. We feel. B, b, yeah, it's far easier, so the operation is far simpler and let the JIT optimize this. So I have a, sorry, so I have a quick comment about the previous uh, question regarding nullability. So why don't we simply, yeah, crash? Uh, remember, the problem is worsened by the fact that default value for reference is null. So even if you don't immediately see that in your program, it doesn't mean there are no nulls in your program. Yes. And uh, well, it would be a surprise for a naive user running his uh, program with uh, some bugs in it, which didn't affect him before. Yeah when it simply what? stops what? working. What? And <laughs> 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 it, it, yeah, no, it's, 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 if you refer to Kotlin, if you take a look to the bytecode, yeah. <laughs> you have the same issue. But, that, but that's a migration uh, yeah. problem. Yeah, but so, so, so what, what you're saying is very interesting. It means that if you have a class that store an optional as a field, currently the VM will initialize it with null even if in the user code you don't see this. So that's why we have to provide the nullable value type. And default value reuses the same uh, uh, represent bit representation. So default value is always zero. Yeah. So VM, in, from initialization point of view, VM just writes the same value in memory, but uh, it, it's interpreted in a different way between value types and references. So when at some point you recompile your program and convert a, a ordinary class to a value class, the meaning of those bits change, bit yeah. value changes. Yeah. So. Uh, basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's what I was saying. Uh, if you write the constructor in Java and you say it's a value type, the compiler will transform it into uh, default with it. With it. So from the user point of view, it's the same boring Java code for a constructor. This dot something called something, but the bytecode is different. Can you talk a little bit more about the default support that we get? Like you said, two string hash code and so on is provided. Uh, is there like a default constructor? What, what happens when you have an error? Mm, it, it's another uh, project named Ember uh, in a, um, so, uh, currently, we want the language, not the VM, to support data object or case uh, class if you are uh, in, in, in the Scala mood, let's say like this. Um, so uh, in that case, you can declare a record. Uh, if you declare a record, if it's a record, 
it will be a class that provides uh, basically the same thing as getter and to string equals hash code. And if you declare a value record, it will be a value type with the default constructor and to string equals. But if you have a value type that's not a record, then none of that stuff happens. No, by default, a value type is not a record. Oh, I see. You, you, uh, the, uh, the user can choose to have a value record or not. Yeah. So if it's a record, will equal equals do the same thing, or will equal equals still return false? Uh, if it's a, a plain record, not a value record, equal, uh, equals equals will do the reference equals right. equals. And if it's a value record? If it's a value record, it will return. Can I request to please also make it implement compared to and comparable? Yeah, it's a good question. I have uh, raised this exact question to the uh, Amber mailing list. You can find the email. And the answer from Brian was no. So, <laughs> so, so, so basically, you have to write your own um, uh, comparable. So the question why is that they changed HashMap to make a binary tree if there's too many too many clashes, it, and it, quite likely what they will do for the hash code is they'll make like the worst possible hash code of x times 31 plus y, right? Which generate lots and lots of clashes, which means you have lots of clashes within the within the HashMap, which means you need a good compare to in order to get decent reasonable performance on your keys. That's the answer to why we want compare to. Yeah, uh, I, I will uh, answer with um, uh, uh, basically if you have value type, you can rewrite hash map with a more compact data structure, and all your problem may go away or not. <laughs> yeah. So. A uh, little bit different question. You said they want to maybe change a bit a string to use the value types, or make a, v a string value ta type. Is there what other classes are planned, like a <laughs> class value type, for example? I mean, class is a bit. Yeah, yeah. They, they really try to be very efficient with class. But, but basically, the, 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 the issue is if people use equals equals on it, if people use synchronize on it, if people ask for the default hash code on it, they will be surprised. OK, so um, you said that equals equals does not work for value types, which is? No, it works. It returns false. Well, which is, which is kind of weird when you're looking at primitive types. Yes. Right? And a value type is some kind of a primitive type. So it should work the way it is expected for an int or long. Yes. Um, so we start that way. Okay. And yeah, I remember. That's, that's why I looked like a little bit surprised when you said it's not working. Yes. Um, um, so you, you said there is an equals method generator, right? So if you have a reference to an object, which is well, in Java, there's no mutable object. Um, and you call it equals. That will call down to the equals of the reference. Mm, good question. Right? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so cur currently, uh, um, currently uh, for the prototype, I don't remember. And I, I am the one that has written that code. <laughs> So I can check and, <laughs> okay. uh, but, uh, but currently uh, with the prototype, uh, we, are, we have um, uh, the record things that are able to generate hash code and equals, and we have the value type that are able right. to generate. And what we want is to have the same. It will be better for the user to have <laughs> only one uh, uh, so generating thing. Uh, so, the, uh, so the question is, why not uh, implement uh, equals equals as a component-wise equals on uh, every, uh, yes, on, 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 the, on the structural things? And the thing is that uh, it's a performance issue. There is a lot of, lot of codes that consider that um, ECMP, the, the bytecode corresponding to equals equals, has to be really fast. If you start to have an SEMP that 
maybe do a component wise uh, test it will slow down a lot of things like hash code and so basically uh, I don't remember who does that but it was implemented they have done testing and it was slow well even if you even if you look at the default implementation for the uh, equals, there is a fast pass which just compare, do, does a reference comparison. Yes. And if uh, you do a component-wise uh, compar comparison, it means that you basically convert a reference uh, comparison to a contents comparison that turns equals equals into a equals method. Like. But, but a value type is immutable, so I could just go through the memory and say, please compare this chunk of memory for me. That's like a linear scan and but it should be st fast. Still, there is a equals and pointer comparison, and those are two different operations. And but it doesn't make sense uh, from the semantic point of view to do a pointer comparison. So it would be nice to just forbid a uh, pointer comparison for values. Uh, but the problem is what to do with the uh, generalized, uh, with the generics. You want to uh, abstract both over references and values. So any file, like, and in that case, is it forbidden to use pointer comparison in any file code or not? Uh, what, it, what it means by any file code is the new generics way to either uh, to adapt for reference and value type and to generate uh, uh If you forbid the pointer comparison in uh, generics, it basically uh, forbids any migration of uh, generalized code to value types. Because point, uh, pointer semantics, uh, reference semantics is all over the Java code. It's, sometimes it's implicit, sometimes it's explicit, but there are lots of places which assumes you work with a reference. And uh, when you migra uh, extend it to values, you have a big problem. So that use case you're describing, won't you typically fall back to the dot equals anyway? I, I don't quite quite get it. I mean, you have these fast uh, equals operators where you're doing the reference comparison, and then you will fall yeah. through to doing by value yeah. comparison anyway. So I. I still don't quite get the argument. Value types will be inherently slow to compare. No, no, they are not. Uh, uh, if, if you do a component-wise comparison, it's far slower than... Uh, and, um, but, but that's, but that's the cost of using value types. That, yeah, that but you... don't have identities, so that's the only way you can compare them, right? Yeah, but... It, um, <laughs> yeah, you can compare them using equals and say that the pointer comparison is useless for value type. Yeah, it just, it, 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 all the, every time you try to do a pointer comparison for values, it returns false. So there is no pointer equality between uh, uh, value types. So that's, that, that's it. But, but perhaps uh, the problem is, um, uh, um, uh, uh, we are talking about the VM. Uh, from the user code point of view, if you have a value type and you type equals equals, it will not compile. Okay. Uh, if you are in Java and you use value type. Okay. Oh, I can look at that. My uh, statement invalid because I propose let's make optimization. If you do equals equals, you will just emit false there instantly. And yeah, currently, the JIT does exactly that. Okay. If the JIT is able to see that one side of the equals equals, or technically one side of the ECMP uh, bytecode is a value type, it just folded to false. This is uh, currently implemented. <laughs> uh, will the verifier extend it for this to check this? Yes, so um, it's something that has changed, but currently the verifier also verify that the um, value types are um, uh, used in a correct way. Uh, it was well, not the, the case of the, the early prototype, the one of, of uh, last November, but currently in the new prototype. As, um, the verifier does the check, which means that fr uh, from the bytecode point of view, 
um, you have to know if something is a value type or not. And the way this is done, I don't know if you, you want this kind of detail, but uh, in, 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 the, in the, the, the dot class, you have an attribute that say, this class, this class, this class are value type. So you don't have to load them to know if it's a value type or not. You have directly an annotation in the bytecode that say, these types are value types. So you can type check things without loading them, which is an important property. I would like to make Java. a small correction to your previous statement regarding uh, compiler errors when uh, values are pointer compared. Uh, it's still possible to write code in pure Java which exposes that and it's any yeah, five generics. You, you take your value type, you put it in an object and you do well, equals equals. Yeah, or a generic code. Gen yeah. uh, you just uh, have a any fire generics. Yeah. You you use pointer comparison and then you yeah. parameterize yeah. the code with a value type. Yeah. And still on the bytecode level you will get a pointer comparison between yeah. uh, two values. Yeah. So. so so right now that would mean if you would use a value type in Groovy, it would break because the the first equals equals that is made there results in a reference comparison. The first equals it, we expand it to a method called and you... Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. It, yeah. W w what you're saying is that in Groovy, the, the semantics of equals equals is the right one and not Java. So, so by default, you call equals, so it will always work. No, so it will always fail because we first do the reference comparison. But this returns false and then you fall yeah. back to the comparison yeah. of you the entire... Ah, and you do an so a really cool. But you said I cannot do the reference. No, I can. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I so, I mixed up. Yes. another question that is regarding the equals equals. Does, from the semantics of the language now, if you take value types and equals equals to itself, it's false? Yes. But is this it's like I use equals it or equals the compiler will e prevent e it? Equals equals mean are they at the same address in fucking memory? <laughs> and they are. And they are no, the same th register. there is no address <laughs> for a value type. That's the whole point of value type. So, yes. Just out of curiosity, so anything like uh, uh, memory alignment of fields, does it at all? Uh, for instance, if we have arrays and we have can we somehow influence the alignment? Ah. It, it, it's another question for Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, currently, it's not part of Valhalla. Okay. But I know that it's perhaps part of uh, Panama, uh, a way to um, uh, change the layout uh, to, uh, as a user to control the layout of an yeah. object. It's what you want. Yeah, there is no way to control alignment of uh, the, the, the layout, layout of value types is purely implementation deta detail and uh, VM decides uh, whatever it uh, looks feasible. It depends on uh, the natural alignment of uh, the uh, components of uh, the value. GVM is free to rearrange the fields to uh, reduce, to minimize the size. Uh, for example, uh, at, if, 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 if you want atomic uh, behaviors, like atomic updates, in that case, uh, alignment can be uh, affected as well. But, well, other than that, uh, usually VM tries to push uh, uh, the, f the size to a minimum. Yes, we have a, a goal in uh, Panama uh, to uh, implement custom uh, layouts for on heap and off heap. Uh, data. Uh, there is a so-called uh, LDL layout definition language, and it uh, it's targeted for a uh, very wide range of uh, layouts, and it provides a way to control uh, uh, the layout on a bit bit level, even down to the the the, the concrete bits. Uh, but right now there is no VM support for that. So it's a library, it's implemented on library level and uh, uh, there is no need to, f there is no way to feed it into GVM 
uh, to control the actual layout of a particular class. So you can, for example, implement, uh, instantiate a primitive array and uh, like uh, put a layout on top of it, whatever you like, but still uh, there will be a primitive array on, on the heap. So. Okay, it, it seems we are over. Um, so um, just to wrap up, value type are great. <laughs> Uh, uh, for the prototype, I will not. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you, but perhaps it's 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 a good conclusion. You should download the prototype next week and play with it, please. And, and report all the yes, and failures report. of broken VMs to yes. the list. <laughs>